Oh, I might have got that. I think I got that lightning strike. Oh man, that was cool looking. This is Steve with Mr. Big Kid, and I know I told you guys last time, but I'm going to try to show you guys how I capture my storm and lightning pictures. So I just got an alert on my phone that there's a dust storm rolling in, or the Arizona monsoon's rolling in. Uh, if you guys are aware, Arizona monsoons can be intense. So here's an idea of where I'm driving to. Yeah, that's a dust storm. It's a big dust storm. And there's a perfect spot that I'm gonna drive to. It's about a five minute drive. But I'm gonna try to get into the dust storm so I can capture it as it's passing over. Now the dust storms are full, like usually what follows after the dust storm is uh, basically rain and thunder and all that fun stuff. So that dust storm is a big one. Wow. So I'm very excited to finally show you guys the other thing that makes me a big kid. And that thing is photography. I absolutely love photography, especially landscape and nature photography. I love weather. I'm very fascinated with, with clouds and rain and storms. So Arizona, this time of year, it is monsoon season. Uh, we get hammered with this kind of stuff. This dust storm outside is not a big deal. It happens very often. So let's see what I can get for you guys. to capture some storms the wind was blowing so fast that my little tripod kept blowing over I love this little tripod it's it's a really good one but it just kept blowing over I bought a big beefy tripod this tripod's not going anywhere all right let's look outside you can see cars are just forced to drive very slow can't see who's coming over my little camera setup right now this is what I like to use when I'm out trying to capture uh, lightning strikes um, like anything there's so the Arizona weather is not hard to capture why the reason being or the reason is because the monsoon the the lightning storms are like consecutive it's lightning strike lightning strike 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 over there strike over here and all you have to do essentially the theory is a long open shutter now it's still light out and I have no idea where I put my uh, ND filters so it's gonna be a little tricky capturing lightning right now but lightning should stick around hopefully till it's dark because sunset should happen in about 30 minutes and and then obviously it'll get darker and then I can capture the lightning so this is what I use a Nikon D750 and I'm using a 24 to 120 f4 lens so it is a full-frame camera so it has very good low-light performance and this camera is it's been such a blast to use I used to shoot on a D7100 which I gave to my wife now so when we go on photo shoots together we're both shooting with uh, very decent DSLR cameras um, this camera is very user-friendly, and I always recommend Nikon because it's what I learned on so I am a little biased 
I am filming this video with a Sony RX100 5 or RX100 Mark 5 RX100 V and yeah so I'm using the 24 to 120 for my everything do everything lens however right here I've got my behemoth this is the Tamron um, G2 it's a DIVC USD G2. It's 70 to 200, 2.8. Now this lens was not cheap whatsoever, but it takes incredible photos. Now this is my telephoto, so I'm gonna use this to zoom in and try to capture those cool sights in the distance or when I'm on a photo shoot and I'm doing portraits, the bokeh that this lens gives me is stunning. So on the bottom of my Nikon, I have this big uh, mount and this is for the tripod. Now the tripod I'm using is a big one for the storms. I use a small one typically, very compact, but this one's not so much. This is meant for video, but this is a Manfrotto. Yoink. And look at the, look at the head on this thing. This is a very heavy tripod. It's beefy, but it's very secure. And really, when you have the storms, like when it's storming out so hard, you need that weight to, to help keep your camera stable because when your shutter is open, it's gonna capture every little movement while it's taking that picture. So let's say I'm doing a, a 15 second exposure. My lens is gonna be open for 15 seconds. So anything that happens in front of the lens, any lightning strikes, airplanes, or camera shakes, all of them will come out. So I'm trying to capture some lightning right now. It's still kind of light out, but I have my uh, up really high up. So right now I'm at, let's see if I got anything, nothing there. Let's shoot it again. A lot of it's kind of luck at the same time. Right now it's a four second exposure, but that's 22. ISO is really low. And I'm just hoping within that four second shot, we'll have some kind of lightning action. I'll just keep trying again until we get something. The storm seems to be on the other side, so I'm actually gonna move to the opposite side of the road right now. Try to capture some storms down there. A little sandy. Look at the spot, this is perfect. Perfecto. this to eight seconds now let's see come on lightning do something good oh I might have got that I think I got that lightning strike oh man that was cool seconds and I'll try to take it now. Let's see. Now I got 20 seconds for some interesting lightning strikes to happen. Oh, that was good, but I don't know if that was in frame. Shoot, I don't think it is. I need something to happen like there. Everything's happening like there. But whenever I focus the camera there, then everything happens right here.
See, the problem is once you finish taking the shot, it takes about another 20, 30 seconds to process the photo. So I get about half the time the camera's actually rolling. Half the time the shutter's open, the other half the time it's processing. So, all right, I got an excellent shot finally. It's a lightning bolt that was like direct center frame. Let me fire this up again. Current settings are 25 second shutter, uh, F8 I believe. And I actually have the little Sony out too, trying to see if I can capture lightning with a point and shoot camera. It was a good shot. You guys want to see how it came out?